We're at the Green Grove Predator Exclosure. Uh, this is about a 110 acre fenced in area that has an electric wire at the top, middle, and bottom, and it's designed to exclude uh, mesocarnivores. That would be sort of the mid-sized mammalian predators uh, that we have in the region. Coyotes, red and gray foxes, bobcats, raccoons, opossums, things like that. When we built these, our, our interest was primarily in measuring direct impacts. And by direct, predators kill prey. And so when we started this study, our interest was strictly in population level responses of prey species to reduce predation pressure. When we first built these fences, we really didn't think we would see a large response in white-tailed deer. And the reason for that is that the fences are small, only 110 acres, and we knew that white-tails had home ranges much larger than that. And instead, uh, what we saw almost immediately, white-tailed deer prefer to be inside the fences. And for a period of time, the number of deer inside the exclosures relative to the plots that, that we use for comparison was probably five or six times greater. The deer suddenly sense a, a reduced predator abundance, and so they use it much more than they would if predators were present. I mean, really, it's all aspects of their behavior seem to be affected by the predator. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Fear is a powerful motivator. And so much of our research now deals with trying to quantify the prey response to risk of predation. A lot of people are often surprised when they find out that we spend a lot of time studying rats and mice, small mammals. But these small mammals support the predators. And one of them in particular, which is the hispid cotton rat, if it's not the most common, it's tied for the most common small mammal on the property. That species makes up probably, I think it's safe to say 50% of the diet of most of our predator species here. So they're that important. And so it's important that we know where these animals are, how our management, especially prescribed fire, affects their populations because they're the species that, that hold up the, the, uh, the predator community. We are small mammal trapping. Um, we set a bunch of these uh, Sherman live traps out and um, put some bait in it and left them overnight. And we caught uh, a hispid cotton rat here. And now we're gonna take some biological data from this rat. So this animal does not have any ear tags, which means we've never caught it before. Um, so one of the things we typically do is we will put an ear tag uh, on these animals so that in the future, if we recapture them, we will have that information to know that this is a, um, an animal that we've had before. And you can do a lot of uh, data analyses with that kind of work, recapture data. And she weighs 132 grams. That's actually a pretty good sized rat. So one of the things we take is the hind foot length which we just measure the longest toe on one of the feet. And her hind foot is about 27 millimeters. I think they just play a really interesting ecological role uh, in this ecosystem. Um, a number of years ago, we did a research project where we put radio, tiny little radio collars on these guys and we tracked them um, and we're interested in what the cause of death was for them. Um, and basically what they do is, is they sort of like feed, feed everything up the food chain. Um, we found them in five different species of snakes. We found them in owl pellets and hawks nests. We found them in uh, raccoon poop and bobcat poop and coyote poop. And so I find that by studying like cotton rats, you kind of get glimpses of like everything kind of higher up on the food chain as well. All right, right, here you go. What we see immediately following prescribed fire is we do not see a lot of fire-related mortality. You know, people think that you, when you're burning the forest that animals are, you know, running, screaming with, on fire. That's not the way it happens. Normally, these small mammals, uh, most of them are, are able to escape the fire. Either they find a break in the fire line or they'll go underground, uh, stump holes in gopher tortoise burrows. But the fire itself 
really has a very minor impact on mortality, if at all. What happens immediately after that fire, when this area is burned, it's, it's wide open, it's blackened earth. Imagine if you're a small mammal looking for a meal. First of all, the meal is difficult to find. And then secondly, you're exposed. You're exposed to uh, birds of prey, you're exposed to mammalian predators. And so what we see after a fire is the small mammal populations generally decline pretty rapidly, but it's due to predation following the fire. It's not the fire itself. If we didn't burn the forest, it would eventually shade in and it, the habitat would be unsuitable for the very small mammals that the, the predators are pursuing. So it's just a cyclic thing and it just continues on.